Welcome back. Alex Sweeney is the very model of the modern metro man. He vespers to work in suits that tone nicely with his scooter and the cappuccinos he sips in cafe land. He's co-founder of the heart of the city, Auckland City that is, a CBD lobby group that lately has been getting right up the noses of politicians. You see, heart of the city has dared to suggest that public land on Auckland's waterfront, and we're talking some of the most valuable land in the country here, should actually be used for parks and public buildings, and not apartments for the wealthy. John Hudson with that story. Auckland's waterfront, it's worth billions. It's gold, it's gold real estate. Coastal real estate is probably the most valuable real estate in New Zealand. Alex Sweeney is talking about one of the uglier parts of that golden waterfront, Tank Farm. They've stored fuel and chemicals here for decades, but soon Tank Farm will be changing. And Alex has a clear idea what should happen. We're talking about a large, generous park that connects Aucklanders, New Zealanders and tourists with this most beautiful harbour. And we're talking about some public buildings here. It's showcases, postcards, what our city is all about. Postcards like Bilbao's Guggenheim, Chicago's Millennium Park, Valencia's Lemispheric, and of course, Sydney's Opera House. Beautiful buildings that attract millions of tourists each year and put cities on the map. Waterfronts around the world are all becoming available as ports redefine their activities. And we're the only city in the world that's thinking of carving it up to 200 square metre lots and putting apartments on it. Have we gone mad? No, we haven't. But the owners of Tank Farm say, get real. Just to go to parks and iconic buildings and have no revenue stream at all is, is a huge, huge ask. It'll be a huge, huge redevelopment, nearly doubling the size of the CBD. But Ports of Auckland started out wanting a park of just 1.2 hectares on the tip. The rest, a cash cow of buildings helping to fund Auckland's exploding infrastructure. That site is worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Once it's gone, it's gone. We aren't saying no to buildings, but we're saying public buildings within a public park. Part of the city wants eight of the port company's 18 hectares reserved for parks and public buildings. How big's that? Well, about as big as Victoria Park that I'm standing in, and seven times the size of the park that the port company initially offered. Now, you might think that as the port company owns the land around here, they'd do what they like with it. But it's not that simple. This is Auckland, after all, and there are lots of local bodies to appease. And one in particular wants to use the profits from the port company on projects elsewhere. We're looking at a shortfall of $700 million. Auckland's regional council's shortfall is on public transport. That's partly paid for by profits from the port's company. We get $70 million a year from the ports of Auckland. That's absolutely vital. So anything that cuts back the commercial advantage the ports of Auckland have cuts back your ability to pay for infrastructure, is that right? Um, uh, yes, to a degree, yes. So if there's more park, there's less profit to subsidise public transport. And someone's going to have to make up the shortfall. That could be Auckland's long-suffering ratepayers. Why can't you simply say all of that land should be uh, public park or public buildings? It just comes down to cost. There's no debt on this public land, but if the Auckland Council insists on more park, believe it or not, it has to buy it from the port's company. Mayor Hubbard's trying to avoid that expensive money go round. I've got to make sure then that we don't unfairly penalise the ratepayers and residents of Auckland City, whereby we put in several hundred million dollars into the tank farm. That allows the developer, which is the ports, to uh, make uh, developers' margins. That then goes up to uh, the ARC and then out to subsidise uh, public transport for the whole of the Auckland region. That would be unfair. Don't turn this into a public space versus public transport debate. Aucklanders just aren't going to buy that one. If they think they're going to trade their waterfront off against a few buses and trains, well, we've gone mad. Yeah. 
Alex Sweeney fears Tank Farm will be seen as simply a cash cow, dominated by mixed-use development like the existing viaduct basin. It's great for what it is. It doesn't need to be replicated out there. Much of the nearby viaduct harbour is privatised. A group of astute businessmen have made hundreds of millions from purchasing what 10 years ago was public land. Do you think that was a mistake, that some of it got sold off? Uh, yes, I do. Ten years ago, Auckland City narrowly missed buying viaduct from Ports of Auckland. It certainly doesn't want more waterfront privatised. But it's been Alex Sweeney's raucous call for more park that's really captured the public imagination. Who says Aucklanders are apathetic? In five days, 4,046 of them said, we, we don't want apartments and we want a large, generous park down there. So this is democracy in action? This is the people talking. <laughs> and the politicians responded. The proposed park got bigger. So 3.7 hectares, that's the size of the park, and that's as far as you're going to go at this stage? Well, I, I don't want to be, uh, get into figures because they keep changing. Indeed they do. They're now talking about a public space on Tank Farm of between four and five hectares. But that may mean Auckland City Council having to buy land, and that could cost hundreds of millions of dollars. It could lead to another rates blowout, effectively subsidising infrastructure in the Auckland region. But if Aucklanders were to look across the Tasman, they'd see a very similar project being managed in a very different way. Sydney's East Darling Harbour, on the western side of the CBD. Just like Tank Farm, it's a contaminated reclamation. They're going to turn this into this. But there's no tangle of local bodies here. The New South Wales state government simply held a competition to find the best redevelopment proposal. We believe it's the first international competition in Sydney since the Opera House competition in the 1950s. So that was remarkable. Paul Burkmeyer, one of the architects behind the winning proposal, he says the government laid down clear, non-negotiable criteria. Half the land was to be parks, paid for by residential and commercial rents. So the government wasn't out to make another 10% on the site? No, no. I think that's very important because there's always a temptation to maximise return. As soon as you try to do that, then you lose the public benefit. You lose the parkland and you lose the civic amenity. While there will be skyscrapers up to 40 storeys high, the trade-off is a series of intimate parks. There will be no apartments near the water's edge. If you think about Sydney, there are only fragments where you can come right up close to the water. This is one great new edge. And what's this down here? That's, that's a pretty wide avenue. Isn't it? Uh, yeah. Many New Zealand architects think Auckland yeah. should have a great new edge as well. I think a grand vision for the point is essential if, if we want to get it right for our kids. Uh, if we just fill it up with apartments and offices, um, we're just giving them more of the same. We think that there's space for public buildings here. And Graham Scott has already laid out roughly how he thinks Tank Farm should be zoned. The headland poking out of the water is a real Kiwi sort of icon, if you like, and we think that there's huge potential here that should be explored in a design competition of some sort. Why is it so important that Auckland gets this right now? Um, Auckland has a history of being a sort of um, cowboy town in terms of development, really. It's quite poor, actually, in urban design terms. And much of that poor design has been on the waterfront. For 150 years, Aucklanders have been filling in the harbour, at times building dodgy structures on the reclamations. Once there was even a meatworks on the wharves. That's long gone, but they're still making land for more wharves, dumping rocks in the harbour. Many cities overseas moved their ports away from the city centre years ago. But Auckland missed the boat, opting instead to expand its container port further east. And the dodgy building nearby continues. Alex Sweeney fears the cowboys haven't left town. Well, in 1989, when it was first planned, the, it was described as being a world-class gateway to the city. So you've got the Rubber Dub and Frank Allen Tyres and Midas, and you've got McDonald's and KFC. I mean, they are world-class, uh, you know, world-class businesses. Yeah, they are world-class businesses, but this is not... They have a place to play, but it's not here. 
Aucklanders were promised generous public spaces in this world-class gateway to the waterfront. They got a world-class view of shipping containers. So this is it, this is Britomart, wonderful isn't it? A few hundred metres away is Auckland's new transport hub, Britomart. Thousands will pass through here on their way to Auckland's new stadium. But there's a problem. So the pedestrians who are coming from Britomart to the new arena come straight through here. <laughs> How did this happen? This is the main corridor and it ends up at the loading dock. <laughs> it's madness. <laughs> 12,000 seat arena, 124 yeah. car parks. So yeah, a lot of people are gonna have access to this way, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, lots. Mm -hmm. wow. And then there's the Stalinesque row of new apartments successfully blocking sight lines to the sea. Mayor Hubbard's unimpressed. Can you guarantee that we won't be seeing that sort of thing down near Tank Farm? I can give you an absolute commitment as Mayor of Auckland, I'll move heaven and earth to make sure that that doesn't happen. Alex Sweeney puts Auckland's bungles down to piecemeal planning. He's heard the buzzwords before, he's heard the promises. But he reckons what's happened at the eastern end of town could just as easily happen out west. I think everyone's admitting that we got it very wrong. But when we see that same word, mixed use, happening on our waterfront, and the same authors of those reports in 1909 preparing this plan, Aucklanders should, or New Zealanders should be worried, very worried. I would have thought that we, the right thing to do would be wait and see what the plan is and then criticise the reality rather than the, your assumption of what you think it may be. Auckland's civic leaders say, trust us, we're working together to ensure there's no bungling this time. What's more, the latest world-class vision, they say, will be up for further scrutiny once it's released. What we are seeking is a plan change, a bunch of words and, and some pieces of paper which become the rules under which the site gets developed on. The words that will reshape the Auckland waterfront are once again being revised. And Alex Sweeney knows it's the words that are crucial. So it's very important that we get the words right in 2006 so that what we're doing in 2066 is coming out right. Coming up, a very different notion of what the perfect body looks like.